Excellent research also points to the fact that another potent way to synthesize happiness, that is to create genuine states of happiness in ourselves, is to leverage the so-called focus system, or rather, I should say, to de-emphasize the tendency of our minds to wander. There's an excellent paper on this, also published in the journal Science. This is now a classic paper. I talked a little bit about it in the episode on meditation, but for those of you that did or perhaps didn't hear that episode, I just want to briefly touch on a few aspects of the paper. And the title of this paper, again, is uh, very straightforward in terms of telling you what it's about. And that is, A Wandering Mind is an Unhappy Mind by Killingsworth and Gilbert. This is frankly a very interesting paper. This paper involved several thousand subjects, or I should say 2,250 adult subjects. And what they were able to do was to contact these subjects while they were going about living their daily lives and ask them both what they were doing and what they were feeling. They were able to establish whether or not people were watching television or doing housework or working on a home computer or resting or listening to music, etc., in their natural environment. So this is outside the laboratory. And they were able to assess to what extent those people were happy or unhappy or neutral or had some other emotional state at the time when they were engaging in any number of different activities. And they assessed whether or not those individuals were also focused on or focused away from whatever activity they were engaging in. And the takeaways from this study are many, but for sake of today's discussion, what I think is especially interesting is that regardless of whether or not people were engaging in activities that they enjoyed or not, the tendency for their mind to wander from an activity predicted lower levels of happiness than if they tended to be focused on the activity they were engaged in. Now, that itself should be surprising. I mean, what that says is that even if somebody was engaged in activity like cleaning their house or doing homework or reading something that they weren't enjoying, if they were focused on what they were doing, they tended to report as happier than if their mind was drifting elsewhere. Now, this also points to the idea that perhaps our minds drift to unpleasant thoughts more than pleasant thoughts, but they also address that in the study. The point I'd like to make here is, quote, although people's minds were more likely to wander to pleasant topics than to unpleasant topics, and there the, the difference is pretty significant, people's minds tended to wander to pleasant topics about 43% of the time as opposed to unpleasant topics about 27% of the time, or to neutral topics in the remaining 31% of the samples. People were no happier when thinking about pleasant topics than about their current activity. Think about that. People were no happier than when thinking about pleasant things than their current activity. In fact, the mere focus on what they were doing was more powerful than anything else, even if they didn't enjoy what they were doing. So they go on here to say, quote, although negative moods are known to cause mind wandering, analyses strongly suggested that mind wandering was generally the cause and not merely the consequence of unhappiness. The major takeaway, or the one that perhaps we should all be most concerned with, is that when we are not focused on what we are doing, we tend to be far less happy than when we are focused on what we are doing, even if what we are doing is something that we don't deem very pleasant. And certainly if we are engaged in something that we consider very pleasant and we are very focused on, well then our levels of happiness are the highest. That's sort of obvious. But what this study really says is that any practice that can powerfully impact our ability to remain present in the activity we are engaged in, could even be a phone call, could be texting for that matter, could be social media for that matter, right? We're not placing judgment on the activity here. In fact, what we're really talking about is the enormous happiness increasing value of being present to what we're doing regardless of what we are doing. 